Author's note. Here's the next chapter. There is a lemon in this chapter, so if you don't like them, skip the writing in between the bold. Oh, by the end of it, I bet you'll wish I did. Enjoy! Chapter 13. After Prom. After the great news that Yugi had remembered everything about his past, the group had decided to celebrate that along with Prom. Hey, Yug! Joey said. Yeah? Yugi said, turning to look at his friend. If you ever pull something like that again, I swear that I'll kill you! Joey said. Ha 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 ha! That's threatening to murder someone, Joey. Yeah. You're going down. Yugi laughed. I remember that, Joey, Yugi said. Or maybe not. Okay, we've got to celebrate this, too, Mokuba said. What, Joey's death threat? So, how should we do that? Tristan asked. How about dancing? Taya asked. No! came several voices. Why not? Taya asked. Because we did that at the prom. We don't need to do it now, Bakura said. Yeah, not everyone loves to dance the way you do, Malik said. Hey, no worries, Malik said. He walked over to Ryu and slung an arm around Ryu's shoulder. You two can sit out on the dancing this time around, and I'll be Ryu's dance partner. That way, everyone gets what they want, Malik said. Bakura glared at Malik. Malik, you have two seconds to get your hands off my Hikari before I come over there and rip you limb from limb, Bakura growled. Malik let go of Ryu before Marik grabbed Malik. There's no chance at your dancing with anyone but me, Malik growled. Same here, Bakura added, grabbing Ryu. Atomu rolled his eyes. If you two would dance with them more, then maybe they wouldn't make remarks like that, Atomu said. Marik and Bakura both glared at him. Well, I, for one, like the idea of dancing, Yugi said. All right, turn up the music, Seto said. Mokuba turned the music up, and the different couples started to dance in the large living room of the Kaiba mansion. It's a good thing that we decided to move all the furniture out of the living room for the night, Joey said to Seto over the music. Well, I figured something like this was coming, Seto replied. After about an hour or so, the group got tired of dancing, and Mokuba turned the music back down. So, what now? Tristan asked. How about a game of Twister? Haber asked. Sure, Serenity said. Several groaned. Come on, it's not that bad, Mokuba said before he ran upstairs to get the game. He soon returned and spread out the mat with Serenity's help. So... Who's going to sit out to spin? Serenity asked. I'll do that, Seto said. Come on, Seto. You have to play with us, too, Joey whined. Not going to happen, puppy. I would rather sit this game out, Seto said. Well, I guess everyone else is playing, Bakora said. Who's going first? Yami asked. Why not let the one who regained his memory go first? Seto suggested. Gee, I'm thrilled, Yugi said. Seto spun the spinner. Right hand green, Seto said. Yugi did as told. I'll go next, Taya said. Left foot red, Seto said. One hour later, whoo. The game was down to Yugi, Yami, Atomu, and Serenity. Yami, left foot blue, Seto said. Yami had to maneuver around Serenity to manage that. Atomu, left hand yellow, Seto said. Atomu had to move his hand under Serenity's body to reach it. Serenity, right hand green, Seto said. Serenity tried to move, but lost her balance and fell, knocking Atomu down as well. Well, it looks like we're down to the two game masters, Joey said. Just get on with it, Yami said. All right, your majesty, Seto said. He spun again. Yugi, left hand blue, Seto said. Yugi moved his hand to the spot. Yami, right foot yellow, Seto said. Yami moved to the spot, which was under Yugi's body. Quite the position you have, Bakura said. Shut up, Yami snapped. Kora, be nice. Ryu reprimanded. Seto spun again. Yugi, left foot blue, Seto said. Yugi barely managed to move his foot into the right place. They won't last much longer, Haber remarked under his breath. Taya nodded in agreement. Yami, right hand red, Seto said. Yami tried to move, but couldn't manage it and ended up falling down on the mat. Malik started laughing. Well, it looks like your Hikari managed to kick your ass yet again, Yami, Malik said. Yeah, first a ceremonial duel, and now in a game of Twister. Bakura added. Yami glared at them. Yugi had straightened himself up and helped Yami up onto his feet. He then looked at the two laughing Yamis. You know, if I hadn't beaten Yami in the ceremonial duel, then you might have still been trapped in the Millennium Items and wouldn't be with Ryo and Malik like you are now, Yugi pointed out. That thought stopped the two from laughing. He does make a good point, Ryo agreed. The others laughed at the expressions on Marik and Bakura's faces. Okay, I think that's enough of that game, Seto said. Mokuba put the game up and set it aside, intending to take the game back up to his room later that night. So, what now? Tristan asked. A movie? Serenity asked. Excellent idea, sis, Joey agreed. What should we watch? Yugi asked. Action! Tristan and Joey said. Romance! Taya and Serenity said at the same time. 
Hara! Marek and Bakura said. Okay, different ideas, Seto said. So, how are we going to sort this one out? Atomu asked. Come on, we haven't seen any action movies in a while, Joey said. We haven't watched horror either, Bakura shot back. This could take forever to work out, Yugi said. All right, this is my house, so I'll decide what we watch, Seto said. Why you? Bakura asked. Because he's the host of the party, Kura, Ryu said. Oh, point made, Bakura agreed. Seto went over and pulled out a movie. We'll watch this, Seto said. Well, we might as well watch it then, Haber said. Seto put the DVD in the player and then turned off the light. Everyone settled down on the floor to watch the movie. Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, no. After the movie went off, everyone got up. Well, that was a good movie, Joey said. Please, we've watched that thing like ten times before, Bakura said. And it was terrible every time. Well, I chose it. If you want to watch a horror movie, then you'll have to watch it at your own house, Seto retorted. Hmm, not a bad idea, Bakura agreed. Tristan glanced at the time. Whoa, it's getting pretty late. We better head on out, Tristan said. Yeah, Taya agreed. Well, it was a fun party, Serenity said. Yeah, we need to have them more often, Mokubo agreed. The group made their way to the door. We ought to meet up sometime tomorrow, Joey said. How about at the mall around too? Taya asked. Great idea, Bakura said before he grabbed Ryu and dragged him out of the house. See you there, Malik said before he also left the house, dragging Malik behind him. Gee, I wonder where they're off to, Haber said sarcastically. The group laughed. See you later, Tristan said. He and Taya left together. We'll catch up with you guys later, Atomu added. Bye, see you tomorrow, Serenity called. Yugi, Yami, Atomu and Haber left the house as well, leaving Seto, Joey, Serenity and Mokuba to their own devices. Yugi and Yami had gone home to the game shop after the party. Like they had planned, Haber and Atomu had gone on to the hotel. Well, it looks like it's just us for the night, Yami said. Yeah, we won't see Atomu and Haber until later tomorrow, Yugi said. I'd say we might not see them until they meet us at the mall, Yami said. The two had changed out of their leather attire and were now in their pajamas. Both were on Yugi's bed. You know, why don't we play a game of Duel Monsters, Yugi asked. That's a good idea, Yugi, Yami agreed. He thought a moment before something hit him. Duel Monsters! Yami exclaimed. What? Yugi asked, sitting up. Yugi, I think I'd better summon Kariba so that he can know you've got your memory back, Yami said. Hey, that's right, Yugi said. Yami got the Karibo card out of Yugi's deck and summoned him. Kuri! Kuri! Karibo said. Hey, Karibo! Yugi said. Karibo turned to him and flew over to Yugi, starting to nuzzle Yugi's face. He sure does like you, Yami said. Hey, I can't help it, Yugi said. Karibo moved back and forth and looked at Yugi. Kuri! Kuri! Karibo asked. I'm fine, Karibo. We thought that you'd like to know that I do remember everything now, Yugi said. Kuri! Kuri! Karibo exclaimed. Yugi smiled. Yes, Karibo, I do remember everything now, Yugi said. Kuri! Karibo exclaimed again, nuzzling Yugi again. Yugi laughed. Yeah, I'm glad that I remember everything too, Yugi said. Yami laughed. I had a feeling that Karibo would like to hear this, Yami said. Kuri! Kuri! Karibo nodded in agreement. Well, Karibo, I think that you need to go back now, Yugi said. Kuri! Karibo asked. Yami and I are planning to play a game of Duel Monsters, so I'll need your help, Yugi said. Kuri! Kuri! Karibo nodded. Yami then sent Karibo back to the Shadow Realm. Shall we play? Yami asked. Yeah, Yugi said. The two grabbed their decks and got ready. Wow, one misspelt vowel and that would have just gone really bad. Two hours later. Sorry, Yami, but that's it. I'll attack with the Sorcerer of Dark Magic and that'll end the game, Yugi said. Yami leaned back and sighed. Well, I guess I lost again, Yami said. Yugi laughed. Come on, Yami. It's not that bad, Yugi said. I know, Yami said. Ah, oh, come on, Yami. It's not like I haven't beaten you before, Yugi said. I know that, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt my pride, Yami muttered. He was lying on his back on the bed. Yugi smiled. He put the two decks on the nightstand before he crawled over to Yami. You can't tell me that you're mad at me for winning, Yugi said. No, Yugi, I'm not. How could I be now that you have your memories and remember everything about us, Yami asked. Well, it's true that I do remember everything about us, but even without our memories... We did make new memories that we'll cherish just as much, Yugi said. Yami smiled. You're right about that, Yami agreed. Anyway, I think I know a way to make you feel better about losing, Yugi said. Yami raised an eyebrow. How? Yami asked. Instead of answering, Yugi leaned down and kissed him. Yami was surprised by this, but he didn't mind it one bit. He closed his eyes and kissed Yugi back. He ran his tongue over Yugi's bottom lip, asking for entrance. 
Yugi complied and opened his mouth. Yami slipped his tongue into Yugi's mouth and started roaming around, making to sure to map out every inch of Yugi's mouth of his tongue, despite the fact that he knew the cavern like the back of his hand. Wow. This just makes potholing even weirder. Yugi moaned into the kiss. He knew that Yami was the only one who would ever make him feel like this. When the lack of air became a problem, the two broke the kiss. What, you don't want to asphyxi kiss yourself to death? Yami looked and then said, Yugi? Yeah, Yugi said, looking up at Yami. When did I get on top? Yami asked. I have no idea, but I don't really care, Yugi replied. Yami leaned down and kissed Yugi again. Yugi immediately opened his mouth and let Yami inside. Yami slipped his tongue inside Yugi's mouth and started roaming around the inside of Yugi's mouth. Once more, the two broke apart for air. Yugi looked up at Yami and realized exactly what he wanted. Yami, make love to me, Yugi said. This startled Yami badly. He looked down at Yugi in utter shock. What? Yami asked, not sure that he had heard Yugi right. Yami, I want you to make love to me, Yugi said. Yugi, are you sure? This isn't just because it's prom night, is it? Yami asked. No, Yami. No, Yami. I have been thinking about it before I lost my memories. I just never talked to you about, so you never knew. I am more than certain that I want this, Yami, Yugi said. He smiled. Besides, what better time do we have for it given the fact that we have the house to ourselves? Yugi asked. Yami thought about it for a moment before he smiled as well. All right, Yugi. If that's what you want, we will. But if you want to stop at any time for any reason, I'll understand, Yami said. Okay, Yugi agreed. Well, um, I'm giving you one last chance, people. If you don't want to hear this, I'm going to stop the video now and the uh, act will take place at the beginning of the next.